Stop treating your dog as if it's a tiny little baby. Stop it. <laughs>
You need to fit it correctly, that's the first thing, obviously. But let me show you how it works. Let me get Nelly, she's having a little run around. Let me whistle her. Nelly, come. Now, here's a little trick if, you're having a, if you are struggling with getting the lead on the dog. Get yourself a treat, and sometimes you can use treats. Get yourself a treat, pop your hand through the loop of the lead, like this. Put your... Did you see that? Nice and easy. Now, this is how a lead is fitted correctly. What you do is, you fit it right underneath the dog's chin, like so. So imagine that a dog's got an Adam's apple, it wants to go above the Adam's apple there, and it fits then right behind their ears in that section there. Just enough so you can fit your finger underneath the, uh, underneath the, the, the rope of, of, the, of the lead. Nice and simple. The next thing then is to use the lead correctly. Let me show you how you use a slip lead correctly. And I promise you, this isn't cruel. But people don't use slip leads because they're too busy babying the dog. This is how you use a slip lead. Really easy. Dogs always walk. If you're right-handed, your dog walks on your left-hand side. Now the heel. Now, all you do is, with the lead, you pull the lead backwards down the back of the dog. And that corrects the dog and it communicates with the dog correctly. Let me show you how it works. It's a very, very short, little, sharp, little pop on the lead, just like this. That's all you do. That then communicates with the dog, shows the dog where heel is, and you'll, you'll stop then having all dogs that do all this business and take you for a walk, where then dogs then will walk at your pace, and your life will be so much easier when you take your dog for a walk, or you go out somewhere for the day with your dog. Now the next thing, come on Nelly, come on sit. The, the next thing is putting your dog in a crate. People think it's really, really cruel, Nelly here. People think it's really, really cruel to have the dog in a crate because they think, oh, the dog's not with me. I can't do that. It's really cruel. It's not being with me. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And they do all this kind of stuff, baby the dog again. I can't tell you, I can't stress the importance of popping your dog in the crate. Because what it does is, it gives your dog, so it knows, yes, hello, Nelly, it, sit down. It gives your dog, let your dog knows then, it's got a safe place where it lives. A safe place where it can go to, and it can just, just be calm, a place where it can turn off. So it's super, super important. Put your dog in the crate. Because if you don't, one day what will happen is you'll end up then with a dog then that can't be left on its own. A dog that's got all anxiety problems, and again, a dog with anxiety problems? That's something you never heard of years ago. So, stop babying your dog, pop it in a crate, and leave it on its own for a bit. Okay, so the next thing that people do to baby their dogs. If your dog is a bit worried by fireworks, or it's worried about other dogs, or it gets a little bit nervous, guess what people do? They do this. They get the dogs and go, oh, baby, 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 oh, baby, baby, the mom's okay. Guess what happens when you do that? When you do that type of thing with your dog, your dog picks up on your vibes and your energy, what you're doing. And it goes, oh, it must be something to be scared of then. If mum or dad says it's something to be scared of, it must be. And it, your dog remembers it, and next time it gets in that situation, it'll then, act, it'll then think and act the same way again. So, stop mardashing and baby your dogs. What you want to do is, if your dog's a little bit nervous, get a lead on it and let's walk through it. If you've got fireworks, then you then don't make a big deal of fireworks. It's just something that your dog's got to learn to get through. And that's all you need to do. So stop babying dogs. And I promise you, I promise you, your dog's behavioral patterns will massively improve. So remember, if your dog's a little bit nervous of something, don't pick it up. Don't baby it. Don't go, oh, baby, come here, because your dog's going to pick up on it. Try and treat your dog a bit like, think of like dogs that live on farms. Now, there's one thing I never ever, as a dog trainer, I never ever ever see dogs that live on farms and you know why because people aren't around those dogs they're not fussing them they're not they're not treating them like a baby those dogs live outside they live in the barns and they're used to being outside constantly all day long and they're not used to being babied so i don't know about other dog trainers but it's very very rare that i see dogs that live on farms so start to treat your dog a bit like a dog that lives on a farm stop babying it Promise me you'll do these things. And I know I'm opening myself up now for all these comments and things, but 
but you've got to stop treating your dog like a baby. Lots of people at the moment have been messaging me and been talking to me about their dogs that are about 12, 13, 14 months old. And what they've, these dogs have done, they've actually bit them, they've, they've gone for their owners. Now, this should never ever happen because dogs should never ever bite their owners because it's totally unacceptable behavior. But the reason why it's happened is, is because if that dog has growled before in the past and the owner has let it go and gone, oh, it's okay, it's just my baby being their baby there with their special little toy. A toy, right? With their special little toy and you don't take it off them and they go, oh, I better not do it because he's growling at me. Your dog then is going to think they're Conor McGregor and they're going to walk around like this and thinking they're top dog and no wonder then that that dog then has bit you. Yeah, you can't have you can't have a dog that bites you. You need to be the top dog, not your dog being the top dog. So again, stop babying your dog, and I promise you, your behavioural pattern will your, your dog's behavioural pattern will change massively. Remember, one of my golden rules is whatever behavioural pattern, bad behavioural pattern that you don't correct, your dog will think it's okay to do. It's that simple. Yeah. So what I mean then by baby and your dog is, it's really, really simple is, people don't discipline their dogs or correct their dogs correctly because all of a sudden we started babying dogs and they think it's cruel. Now, it's not cruel to discipline a dog. You discipline your children, right? If, you're, if your children don't do as they're told, you don't just let them run around the house and go crazy and go wild. What you do is some people have to sit on a naughty step. That's not, that's not cruel to set kids on a naughty step. Same thing with dogs. I wouldn't let Nelly now, I'm going to open the cage, you know, open my dog box. I wouldn't let Nelly just come straight out or run out because there's, there's, a, there's a road here. She knows that she can come and say hello, but she knows that she can't just come out. So it's, it's exactly the same thing. If she did come out, this is what I would do. So this is what I mean now by about not baby your dog. If she did want to come out, I would do this. Shut the door and say, look, you can't come out. There's rules and regulations. There's terms and conditions of how you must behave. Does that all make sense? So I'm not saying that you can't, I'm not saying that you can't fuss your dog and give them a cuddle because if you couldn't do that, then having a dog would be a bit rubbish, right? Because do dogs are all about having cuddles and, and doing all that or else it'd be a bit boring, wouldn't it, Nelly? Yeah, exactly, see? So I'm not saying you can't kiss them, I'm not saying you can't cuddle them. In. Yeah. But what I'm saying is you need to discipline a dog and don't let the dog run all over you because if you do, then you start babying too much and you can have loads and loads of problems. I hope this all makes sense and I really hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Okay, everybody, so stop doing this. Stop picking your dogs up. Stop babying them and cuddling them. I mean, you're going, oh, my little baby, and doing all this business. Because all you're going to do is you're just going to open yourself up to loads and loads of problems. And if your dog doesn't heal properly, if your dog doesn't do as it's told, if your dog is an absolute pain in the bum, then you've only got yourself to blame if you are babying your dog. Yeah, you're, you're, I, I said this the other day to a client, and um, it's one of those things where when you say something, when you say something, you say something so good that you're just like, you kind of surprise yourself because it's that good. And what I said to one of the clients, I said, look, I said, your dog's behavior, good or bad, is a direct reflection on the way that you praise or treat your dog. If you do nothing but treat your dog and treat it like a baby and do all that kind of stuff, and your dog's just going to walk all over you. Dogs need discipline. Dogs need rules and regulations of how they can act and behave, the way that they must act and the way that they must behave. And if you're babying your dog constantly all the time, guess what's going to happen? Your dog's going to walk all over you. So stop treating your dog like a little baby. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have you enjoyed it, Nelly? I think Nelly has too, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll put Nelly down. There's loads of different ways that I can help you. So we do one-to-ones. There's classes on a Monday night and a Tuesday night in Newcastle and Lyme and Maidley. They're only £20 a class. We do group behavioural walks and also do the online coaching and support. Just pop yourself over to thedogtherapist.co.uk. Have a look at how we can help. And I'll see you all on the next video.